Okay, let's start our second class. First of all, uh, we're going to talk about vowels and consonants in a minute, but first I want to mention one other thing. You still need to hand in your notes every Monday, right? You're going to do one additional thing. This is a new program now that you're going to have to think about. I want all of you to go through your notes from last semester. And I want you to identify the areas where you have been corrected at least once, maybe twice. If it's twice, then you really should put that in your list. So go through your notes last semester, especially the corrections that you received in class. That's step one. Make a list of all of the, you think, are meaningful corrections that you received in class. Now, one that Amy was mentioning, it was change. We went over that so many times. And I did the same thing in my freshman English class this morning. And I found some people still did not know how to pronounce change. So in her evaluation, Amy was it's seemingly not so uh, harsh on me as on her classmates, that if we teach it in class, you should learn it and not keep making the same mistake. Is that sort of what you were saying? That's what I got from it. I thought, hmm, so that's sort of a gong ke for the rest of you. If we've taught it once in class, very often you know it quite well in theory. So, chi, a, yi, n, zhi. We did that in zhuyin fu hao. And everybody understands how that works and everybody said it correctly. Is that right? But when we're reading the text, we might say, there's been a big change. What happened? You know how to do it correctly, but when you're reading, it still came out change. What was the problem? Habits, right? What is this bridge that we have to build between theoretical knowledge? We've got it in our brains. You've got both things in your brain. You've got the old habit. You've also got the new correction. They're both in your brain. But what do we have to do to make this into this? This is the theoretical knowledge from the correction, and this is the habit. What do we have to do to go to make this into this? Or turn this into this? What do we have to do? If we just hear it in class, put it in our notes, and don't think about it, what's going to happen? We don't change the habit. So we're going to try to in, in, embark now on a program to fix your problems step by step, one by one. And that's why I want you to make a list of everything that you've been corrected on that you think, hmm, you dolly or Tracy, you'll go in tea. Make a list of it. These are your gongke. These are the things that you want to turn from theory into what? From theory into? Practice. practice. And by practice we mean actual habit. Not just once when you're reading in class, but you build up a new habit. You establish a new habit. That's what we're going to try to do. So for your notes for Monday, I want to see your list. I want to see the whole list of things that you were corrected on at least once, maybe twice, or more. And then you need to design a program for yourself week by week. For week one, maybe your gongke will be fixed change. Don't say change anymore, say change. That will maybe be your gongke for week one. So you need to make a schedule for yourself. Week one, I'm going to work on this. And even in other classes, when I'm reading, every time I see the word change, I'm going to think it's not change, it's change. And finally, through a lot of practice, you're going to make it into your new habit. So this is going to be our effort to turn what we know in theory, what we've learned from the textbook, what we've learned in class, etc., into part of you. So instead of knowledge out there, it's going to be part of you, part of the way you just speak naturally without thinking. That's the important part. You have to practice it until it becomes automatic. Because if you still have to think, what will happen? If you still have to think, you really have to change. If you have to do that every time, what's going to happen? Will the change, will the change be permanent? 
you'll probably easily slip back into the way you did it before because you have to think too much. You have to practice it until system one of your brain, that means the automatic part of your brain, the unconscious part of your brain, takes over and does it without thinking. You don't need to train yourself. You need to learn how to do it already. You don't need to train yourself. That is your goal. This is the no dangyuan that we're doing in addition to the other things we're doing. Everything clear? Anybody have questions? So give me the whole list. And I also want to see your plan for the coming week. You're going to give me your notes on Monday. And I want you to say, this week, I'm going to focus on change. Or I'm going to focus on she instead of shu, ji instead of ju, or compound nouns, putting the correct stress on compound nouns. So every week, you have one focus, one focal point that you work on practice until it becomes what? Habit or automatic? Yeah, habit, yes. Automatic. So you don't have to think about it anymore. This is really important because if it succeeds, then we've made a breakthrough. Because in the past, I think a lot of students have learned a lot of theory and they've changed some things, but there were a lot of things that they learned but they didn't carry over into practice. Majority probably did that. A minority learned them and practiced them and did them really well. But probably the big people in the middle of the bell curve they learned the theory, changed a few things, but not everything they could have changed. So we're going to try that, okay? That's your new gongke. Add that into your notes for Monday. The next thing is uh, this book again. We're using the second edition. It was my shuhu. At the beginning of first semester, I requested the new edition of A Course in Phonetics, and I requested this book, but I didn't specify I wanted the third edition. The third edition is very, very new, and they didn't import it for that reason. So they don't have it. Uh, for next year, I suppose we will get it. But I don't think it's a big deal. The second edition we've used for years, it's fine. I haven't seen the third edition, but I'm guessing it is not hugely different. Because I can tell you this, dip, this edition of A Course in Phonetics, the sixth edition, is not very different from the fifth. They're very close. So second edition, because they don't have the third in stock. And that was my fault. OK? Solved? So starting today, this is the day I give the assignment. The first chapter is due next week. Summary plus the two questions. And we do this every Wednesday. And what's the first thing I'm going to ask you, or one of the first things I'm going to ask you on Wednesdays? Do you have any questions on the chapter? So have your questions ready after you arrive in the classroom? Or when? Before you come to class, organize your questions so we don't have to spend time flipping through the book and thinking. Sometimes we spent like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they say, no questions. So we don't need to do that. Have your questions ready. Any questions on this? Get your copy from K, it's not from K, it's from Cranes, and you should get a discount mentioned in this class, second edition. All clear now? We're going to the textbook. We're going to start chapter six. And again, we'll go around the class. Each person will read a paragraph or part of a paragraph, I may ask you to change in the middle of a paragraph. This, For example, this first paragraph is quite long. So you may get part of a paragraph. With a smaller class now, I hope that each of you gets more chance to read. And prepare ahead of time. Just like with this book, you should prepare your questions ahead of time. With the text, please read ahead because then you will know which words you will stumble on. And you need to check ahead of time. Otherwise, we really spend a lot of time correcting and you spend time thinking and sounding things out, you can make it much smoother, make it go much more smoothly if you prepare ahead of time. So remember how I'm really big on chapter number and the chapter title? And we mentioned this last semester, should, so it should now be very familiar to you. Can we read it all together with the correct stress? With the correct stress, think about the stress first. Look at it with your eyes, read it in your head. Where do you not want to put stress? Where should there be no stress? In the title. Okay. Mechanisms and types. Good. All right, so, let me first. And still say your names. Wendy. I, I know Chap them pretty much by now, but Chapter six. Airstream me mechanism and phonation types. All right, she got the stress right, but what did she miss? Do you know what you missed? Mechanisms. Right, that's fine. 
Chapter Six: Airstream Mechanisms and Phonation Types. Right. All right. Let's just to remind you, beginning of a new semester.、Um, what are airstream mechanisms? We don't really know a bunch of them now, so we can't say. But it's how air comes up from inside of you to outside your body. Does it start from the lungs? Does it start from the glottis? Does it start from the velum? Those are three different kinds we're going to learn about. We haven't learned that yet, but this will just give you a preview of what's coming, so you know what to expect. In Shengguilei, these are two different things we're covering in this chapter. So airstream mechanisms means how we 运气 basically. In Chinese, you say 运气 not 运气 not 运气和运气呢？怎么样运气 That means how you produce an airstream, the manner in which you produce an airstream to produce the sounds of language. And then phonation types. Phonation is voicing. Pardon? That, that's right. That's right. Very good. So phonation is about voicing. It's about what the vocal folds are doing. Are they vibrating? Are they wide open and not moving? There are other things that they can be doing. We're going to learn four different kinds. So. Different manners of using the vocal folds when we are speaking—that's phonation types—and then different manners of 运气 is airstream mechanism. So keep that, keep those two things clear in your head, and this chapter will be more meaningful for you. It won't be just a lot of scattered facts, so that when it's finished, you say,、well, "What was this chapter about?" Okay, go ahead. In this part of the book, we will start considering the total range of. Human phon phonetic capabilities. What's the first syllable? Capabilities. Help. Louder. Okay. Everybody, mark it. Don't get it wrong again. Put it in your program if you need to. But it's capable capabilities. Go ahead. Human phonetic phonetic capabilities.、Uh, do we go down there? Capability.、Mm -hmm. Z. <laughs> Isn't that hard? You have to remember so many things at once. That means that they are not yet automated. If you practice them, you remind, remind yourself whenever you come to a comma or most other punctuation, continuation rise. Remind yourself in your other classes because you do read in your other classes. Is that right? Do you read aloud or not? No.、Mm -hmm. You don't re read aloud in any class. Not a single class. Do you find that a little amazing? Does your teacher read to you? Sometimes. Sometimes. All right. So remember continuation rise. Remember those those final s's and eds, etc. When you're reading, you can look right at it and then read it without the s. That's another thing you're going to have to slow down and think about. Otherwise, you will miss many of them. Go ahead. Not just those used in normal English speech. So the point here is. In the first five chapters, we were discussing mostly English, and now we are stepping out into the big wide world. We're going out into the big wide world of phonetics. It's not just English anymore. And then you may have the feeling, Toto, this isn't Kansas anymore. Didn't we mention this last time? Toto, this isn't Kansas anymore. Amy, you want to explain? Can you take off your mask just briefly? Because I don't think they can hear you. Toto is that. Okay, you yes, yes, so. And it's total. Or, oh, total. This isn't Kansas anymore. They were in this hurricane, and then they fell into this weird world. Right, and they started looking around, and they saw the Munchkins, and they saw all these crazy things they'd never seen before. And she said, "Total, this isn't Kansas anymore. <laughs> it's not her home." In the Midwest of the U.S., and so that's why I'm saying, Toto, this isn't Kansas anymore. We're going to see a lot of weird and wonderful things. Go ahead. We will look at the sounds of the、uh, the world's English languages. The world's what? The world's languages. As in this way, we will we can find stable, repeatable examples of almost all the different speech sounds that people can make. To do list, to do to do list.、Uh, list. Let me say th. 
this, this, make it nice and strong, it sounded like an L. Sometimes when I hear something in class and then I review the, the video, I may have heard it wrong or it wasn't as wrong as I heard it, but the way I hear it now, it sounded like you were saying an L. So, this. Mm -hmm. To do this. 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 Not this, this. This. We will, we will have to enlarge the sets of terms we have been using in, we have been using to describe English. In the first place, all English sounds are intimidated. Don't be intimidated about anything. <laughs> Take it slowly. In. Take off the T-E-D and put an L there, it should be familiar. T-E-D. Take off the T-E-D and put an L there and then it might be familiar. Oh, initial. Mm -hmm. Initiated. Right. Initiated. Initiated and that means to begin. And in computers, they, they say the program is initializing. That's a related word. And that's tu shi hua. And that's the most ridiculous Chinese verb I've ever heard of. Do you think it's funny or is it just me? Have you seen that? Right. Does it sound totally normal to you? Your computer generation, maybe it sounds normal. Okay, I, computers started like being really popular around the early 1990s. I never heard of until I saw Windows. But for you it sounds normal? Would you use it anywhere else besides while reading your computer? Nowhere. All right, that tells you something. If you wouldn't use it anywhere else except for when your program is booting, when your computer is booting, that tells you something. They made it up. I think they made it up. <laughs> Just to trump it. Initializing. But this is initiated, and that means to uh, But um, um, recently we use it when any system is initialized. Is initiali initiated. Initializing. Initializing. Right. Yeah. Or booting, when you're booting a system. Any system. So, like when you open a machine, it, it may tell you, uh, when you turn on a machine, it may, it may tell you that it is too simple. That's right, and that's new. It's only been around since, since Windows has been around. Windows is not that old, by the way. Maybe about as old as you, but that's not very old. <laughs> okay, Windows is still relatively new, and they made it up as far as I can tell, or the translators did. Anyway, this is initiated, and it means they are set off, they're started. Go ahead. Are initiated by the action of long air going outward. Other languages may use additional ways of producing an airstream. Okay, let's just adjust that much. We're now leaving the domain of just English, and we're going to start looking at other languages as well. And here, we're talking about airstream mechanisms. The only airstream mechanisms that English uses for regular sounds of language is pushing air out from the lungs. Now, that sounds totally normal. What else would you do, right? Except for I've mentioned some other odd sounds to you, for example, from Georgian. Do you remember? Uh, uh, uh. Ah, ah, ah. Those do not, the air does not come straight from the lungs. We've cut it off in the middle and we're pushing it up from our glottis. We call that a glottalic airstream mechanism. That's the second kind we'll be learning about. The first one is pulmonic. Pulmones in Spanish is lungs. Pulmonic is the adjective for having to do with lungs. So if you're just pushing the air out to speak in the same way that you breathe, two, take. My name is Karen. It's coming straight from your lungs. That's called pulmonic. That's what English uses. We do use other methods, but not for regular language sounds. Remember last semester I mentioned that when you want a horse to start moving ahead, you say, giddy up, or you can also make a noise. That's not a pulmonic airstream mechanism. It's not coming straight from your lungs. It's coming from up here. It's a click. So those are the different things we're going to be looking at in the first part of the chapter. Things that, we do them occasionally in English, but not as part of language sounds. But other languages use them as regular language sounds. Okay? Mm. Okay.
Okay, so in English, they all come, air always comes up straight from the lungs, pulmonic. Continue. Second, all English. Second. Second, right. all English sounds can be. Is it all? All. 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 Right. All English sounds can be categorized as voiced or voiceless. Okay, don't say voiced. Voiced. Voiced and voiceless. Or voiceless. In some languages. In think. Someone's saying it. Carol? In some languages. You don't have to zip up, it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. In some languages because contrast with other languages, yes. Ahead. In some languages, in some languages, in some languages, okay. additional states of the glottis are used. Used. Are used. Why is it so long? You said it really short. I said it longer. Why? Voiced. Number one is the s is voiced. It's z. And if we have a voiced sound after a vowel, then that vowel becomes longer. There's another reason here in this particular case. Because yes, very good. It's the last word in the sentence, and that will be lengthened. We slow down at the end of a sentence, at the end of a paragraph. The word will be long. The words will be longer, especially the last word at the end of a sentence. Okay. Okay. This, this this chapter. This, smile a little more. This. This. Not this. 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 You're saying out. This. This. That sounds good. This chapter will survey the general phonetic categories. Categories. Ca categories needed. Right. Ease. Remember, your the e is it's ease. 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 Mm -hmm. Categories needed to describe. Needed. Ne needed. Needed to. Not needed. 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 Right. I'm being picky. Needed to describe the airstream mechanisms and phonation types that occur in other languages. Pretty good. Languages. Languages. Good. In another, not in other. In another. Okay. And that occur, how can we link it? Go ahead, John. Right. And why don't you practice that one separately? You can put that in your notes and you can make that as one of your weekly practice. Uh, foci, um, because a lot of you forget to link, and a lot of you forget about the tap. So that occurred. We use this phrase a lot in this book. Have you noticed? I've corrected this uns right umpteen times. So that occurred. That occurred. All right. How about our next reader, please? You mean. Subsequent chapters will survey other ways in which languages differ. This boring sounds. Mm, first word. <coughs> These boring sounds. All right. Everyone put this one in your notes because this one, if by a lot of you are already da si, if by this point you're saying this instead of these, then you need to work on it. Fix it. You know you need fix it. Because if you keep on saying it, it'll be wrong. That's all. It'll be wrong. These. Everyone, these. 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 Two things, no, three things to watch out for. Number one, it's l, not l. A lot of you say these with L in Taiwan English. It should be th these. Number two, S is Z. It's not S, not this. These. Number three, E is very long. Okay, these. So make it clear, go ahead. These boring sounds should be studied. Hmm? Is, that a, is that a boring These These, these boring sounds. Is that a compound? No. No. If it's not a compound, then what should we do? That means you correct, you think you're always watching out for compounds, but then then you should these foreign sounds there. should be studied even by those who are concerned only with the phonetics of English. English. Of English both because they throw light on general human phonetic capability. Human, watch the end. Human Good. phonetic capabilities. Good. And also because they are important they for are. precise description 
precise description of the shades of sounds present in normal mm. in, um, pre present yeah. in normal English utterances. 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 Oh, are, so utterances. Uh, utterances. Yeah, everyone. Utterances. 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 All right, the other one I was going to stop you on is important, and it's getting really common to say important. I, I remember saying this last semester. Um, I hear it more and more, but it's not the way I say it. I say it the old way. Important. Import. T, because it's unreleased. Import. Important. 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 Yeah. Important. Important. In addition. Uh, Yumi, can you say important? Important. Import. Are. Important. Important. Good. That's it. Important. Mm -hmm. For more or. You got a little old, a little British. Important. Mm. Important. In addition, many. In addition. In addition. Good. Many of them occur regularly in pathological forms of English. All right. So my single, but we finished the introduction to the chapter. Before we were only talking about English. Now we're going to look at sounds of other languages as well, and. We're going to learn about some new airstream mechanisms, some new phonation types that we don't have in English. And it's still useful to you, even if you know, you're mainly going to be working in English, so that you can identify different accents. For example, you'll find some of these things in Indian English. And you will have a chance to hear Indian English if you ever call for product assistance, if you bought like a computer and you have trouble and you want to get some help over the phone, the person who answers will very likely be in India. And maybe he got some training, but maybe he still has an Indian accent, so you will have to have some little patience with him and understand what he's saying. You will need to be able to understand him, and this will tell you some of the things you might hear in his Indian English, um, for example. It's also, some of these are found in pathological forms of English, so people who have yuan zhang ai, they may have some of these phenomena that we're going to learn about. And it says that we'll just learn in general about human phonetic capabilities. That's what we want to explore. How many things can be done phonetically by humans? Just for that, out of theoret theoretical, well, practical maybe even, interest. Um, that's a good reason for learning what we're going to learn. OK, next. Jerome. Airstream mechanisms. <coughs> Want to try that again? Airstream. Amy, help? Airstream. Right, and what did Jerome say? Jerome has really wonderful English. It's really, really good. But this is one thing that probably goes under the radar, kind of slips by the sensors. Airstream mechanisms is what I heard. So in order to get, to, to produce the effect of no stress, you have to make it a deep hang, yeah. So listen carefully, airstream, there we are. This is where we need to stay for an unstressed syllable. Airstream mechanisms, if we go up again, we've got stress. Airstream mechanisms, airstream mechanism. That's how we do it, it's a deep hang, yeah. And stream is not stress, so it's already brought you to the, t to the pitch that you need. Airstream mechanisms, everyone? Airstream mechanisms. Now it's perfect, good. Air, com air coming out of the lungs is the source of power in nearly all speech sounds. Okay, overall that was really good, but for the students who are good, I get even pickier and pickier. You should know that by now. And that's not just me. I had a discussion with my uh, British teacher about this. And he was also proud of his pronunciation in French class when he started in, in high school. And he got the most corrections. The teacher kept correcting him the most. He thought, my pronunciation is so much better than my classmates. Why are you picking on me? And the reason was because he was so good. And when he made a little mistake, it stood out even more because he was so good. You have high expectations. So, Keep in mind that when you get corrected a lot, it's because your teacher loves you. <laughs> it's because you're good as well. Um, so uh, you're reading the, the segments were good, but you read it a bit choppy. 
So I'm going to read it for you and see if you can notice some places that you could change a bit to make it sound smoother. Air coming out of the lungs, all right, that is the whole subject, right? So we don't break it up. And not air coming out of the lungs. It's not three pieces. It's the subject, so it's one piece. This relates to phonetics. This is Duan Zhu again. But now we're going to refine what we know and try to turn it into practice and habit. Air coming out of the lungs, continuation rise, is the source of power. Why do we stop? Because in is a preposition. Of is a preposition too, but I didn't stop because um, it's not a subject here. Is the source of power. Well, you can say it's it's a. That's right. It's a it's a it's a. Um, it's a be be don't sit in this one juice, so it's not an object. It is also a subject, but it's like a complement here. That's a good word. You can say that. The point is that source of power belongs together. It's one unit, and that's true often of of. Sometimes you pause before of, but very often you don't. Normally you pause before a preposition, but very often not in front of of because you make guanxi tai mi qie. That's the reason. So air coming out of the lungs is the source of power. Continuation rise. In nearly all, all is a strong word, so we're going to stress it. Anything that says all is indirectly good to the debate. So, for in words that are intensifiers, we often stress them. That's very good. All of speech sounds, and that's a compound. Can you try it that way? Air coming out of the lungs is the source of power in nearly all speech sounds. Okay, that was really nice. I'm going to pick on two more things and then it'll be fine. Source of power, be outdone. Source of power. Gang shuo nigga of zi qian because it's guan xi tai mi qie. And the second thing is speech. Ch is voiced or voiceless. Voiceless. Therefore, the vowel. Speech. Is not so long. Speech sounds. Speech sounds. All right, can you try it just one more time? Air coming out of the lungs is the source of power in nearly all speech sounds. That was really professional. That was good. Speech has you in chang. Speech sounds. Uh huh. Go ahead. When lung air is pushed out, we say that there is a pulmonic airstream me mechanism. Uh -uh. Pulmonic airstream mechanism. Now you got uh, your asthma. Mechanism. Me there we go. All right. This is hua shi tian su. Say mei yong na me zhong. It's not that important a word. We say that there is, we say that there is. Continue. The lungs are sponge-like tissues within a cavity formed. Mm -hmm. uh. Within a cavity. Right. Within a cavity formed. By cavity, the pause, which is sheng lue right? Sheng lue what do we have to do? Pause. Yeah. Within a cavity for, formed by the rib, uh, by the rib cage and the <laughs> this is an example of a word you should prepare before class. What is it? Diaphragm. Diaphragm. Right, we don't pronounce the G. You can see this is from Greek. When it's spelled weird like that, it has a dia. That looks pretty Greek. And that's in Chinese? Exactly, right. A dome-shaped muscle. A dome. I thought you were calling it dumb. What were you saying, Mata? <laughs> dumb. A dome shaped uh? a dome shaped uh -huh. muscle indicated yeah. by the curved line at the bottom of figure one point three. Let's look at one point three just so you can find oh one point three you have to go back to chapter one, sorry. What page? Okay. And where do you see the diaphragm? It's down here. This domed line, that's the diaphragm. And that pushes up to um, push the air out of your lungs. Go ahead. When the diaphragm, when the diaphragm contracts. Not frame, fram. Fram. Mm -hmm. When the diaphragm contracts. 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 Good. It, enlar it enlarges the lung cavity. So lung that cavity. The lung cavity so that air flows into the lungs. Mm -hmm. The lung cavity can also be enlarged by raising the rib cage. The a normal by raising the by raising the rib cage. <coughs> the rib 
the rib cage. <laughs> These habits are hard, especially since it's just not known in Taiwan. It's quite new for you, I think. By raising the rib cage, raising your bianam a jong, it's not a tonic. Tonic tayonam a gao. It's stressed but not really high. So by raising the rib cage. By raising the rib cage. Good. A normal way of taking a deep. A normal way. A normal way of taking a deep breath in. Okay, everything's fine except you have the same thing here that you did earlier. You're making all the stresses into tonics. So a normal way of taking a deep breath in. They all sound like tonics. But we don't have a tonic until... Way can be a small tonic, but in is our tonic. So we should say a normal way of taking a deep breath in. Then we go high. 其他的中音不要那么高, because we keep thinking it's the end, and then another end comes, and then another end comes. Overload, okay. A, no, a normal way of taking a deep breath in. A normal way. A normal way mm -hmm. of taking a deep breath in. There we go. Air can be pushed out of the lungs by pulling the rib cage down. All right, air was again too zhong. It is the subject here, but it's so short. We don't need to make it so strong and so, um, and we don't need to pause so long. Air can be pushed out of the lungs. Air can be pushed out of the lungs. Air can be pushed out, air can be pushed out of the lungs Good. by pulling the rib cage down or by pushing the diaphragm upward by contracting the... By contracting. By contracting the abdominal muscles. In theory, it's abdominal muscles, but it's just like vocal folds. So we say... Abdominal muscles. Abdominal muscles. Abdominal muscles. Abdominal muscles. Everyone? It's just like vocal folds. We don't say vocal folds. It's uh, an honorary compound. It's just like a compound noun. Many of them, like economic situation, political discussion. Etc. Jiaosu, I C A L Juleida, was A L, Gun, um, A L Gun I C, not just Jiaosu. They will often, they will often be stressed, and then the noun after them is not stressed, so it behaves a lot like a compound noun. So here, um, let's go over the content. When we have a pulmonic airstream mechanism, this is what I was talking about just now. This is really the only airstream me mechanism that we normally use in English for actual language sounds. The air is coming out of your lungs, being pushed out, and we're making sounds on top of that with our vocal tract. Um, first of all, what are the lungs? Tissue is zuzhi, remember? They're sponge-like. We talked about the spongy tissue in where before? The nasal cavity, now we're talking about the lungs. They also are sponge-like tissues. And this cavity is formed by the rib cage and the diaphragm. So in front, we've got the legu. And under that, we have the hunger mo. That's the chu yu that we're talking about now. So it's the rib cage, and it's bounded at the bottom by the diaphragm. When the diaphragm contracts, 就是收缩的意思, contracts, 中文的收缩, so, when we contract, we're going to use, uh, we're going to tense that, uh, tense that muscle, our diaphragm, and it's going to make more space. It's going to expand your chest, so you've got a lot more room there, and then your lungs will expand to fill the space, right? So, your diaphragm contracts, we get a larger space here, your ribs expand, your lungs will expand too, and they let more air in, they take in more air. 会吸入, 空气，空间变大了，里面又真空，结果它被这样子撑大，那必须要有空气跑进去来填满这个真空。All clear? The lung cavity can also be enlarged by raising the rib cage. So those are two different strategies for breathing. You can either contract your diaphragm to expand the space, or you can use your rib muscles, the muscles in your rib cage. So try those two. Try your diaphragm and then try expanding your rib cage, those two different ones. Both of them have the same effect, but it depends on what is powering this expansion. If it's the diaphragm, you can feel it down here. 
you'll feel your tummy pushing out, right? There, I'm pushing with my diaphragm. But you can also do it with your rib cage, and then your whole chest expands. Normally, in singing, your teacher will tell you to use which kind of breathing? Diaphragm. Your diaphragm, right? Because a lot of people, you'll see them moving their rib cages all over the place. So I know, for singing, you use your diaphragm. That's the normal way to breathe. That's the best way to breathe. But you can do it the other way. And then air can be pushed out either by pulling the rib cage down or pushing the diaphragm upward. Because if you push your diaphragm upward, it's going to make the space that your lung, lungs occupy much smaller. It's more crowded. So the lungs are going to have to get rid of some air so that they can compress because the diaphragm is pushing up on them. That covers our first two paragraphs. Let's go on. In a description of most sounds, we take it for granted that the pulmonic airstream mechanism is the source of power. But in the case of obstruent consonants, stops, and fricatives, other airstream mechanisms may be involved. You sound like you're starting to say airstream. You've noticed it in your speech? It's not wrong. It's everybody's doing it now. I'm just surprised my students are picking it up. Okay, airstream, airstream is okay, I guess, because it's a new trend, but I say airstream. Airstream. Yeah, I like it better. <laughs> Other airstream mechanisms may be involved. Stops that, stops that use only an aggressive or outward movement, pulmonic... Moving. Uh, out, outward, outward moving pulmonic airstream are called plosives. Obstruents made with other airstream obstruents, obstruents mm -hmm. made with other airstream mechanisms will be specified by other terms. All right. So now we've learned a few new terms. Pulmonic airstream mechanism. Pulmonic airstream mechanism. Everybody. Pulmonic airstream mechanism. Good. And now your stress is correct. So that's air originating directly from the lungs. And when we produce stops in this way, PTKBDG. Stops that are powered by a pulmonic airstream mechanism are called plosives. plosives. Remember last semester we were talking about plosives? And I said, well, let's just call them stops for now. And plosives is fine because we were only talking about plosives. But they're a specific kind of stop. Stop is more general. It includes other things as well. Like the adjective stops I was just demonstrating for you in Georgian. Kat, ap, a. Those are also stops. They're ejective stops. They're, we don't call them plosives because they don't, the air doesn't come directly from the lungs. Let's go on. In some languages, speech sounds are produced by moving different body, different, bodies, different, Zhong Yidian. different bodies of air. Mm -hmm. If you make a glottal stop so that the air in the... If you make a glottal stop, you may make you ye bu zhong yao, make ye bu zhong yao. The glottal stop is important. So if you make a glottal stop, if you make a glottal stop, everyone? If you make a glottal stop. Mm -hmm so that the air in the lungs is contained below the glottis, then the air in the vocal tract itself will form a body of air that can be moved. An upward movement of the closed, of the cl closed glottis will move this air out of the mouth. A downward movement of the closed glottis will cause air to be stuck into the mouth. When either of these actions occur, occurs, uh, occurs yeah. there is said to be a... There is. There's uh, there's, there's say, they, there's say to be mm -mm. said. Mm -hmm. I like the way you're kind of helping each other on this. That's good. There is. There's said to be a, a glottalic airstream mechanisms. Want to try that again with watching out for your stress? Uh, not quite. Huh? No, glottalic is fine. That was correct. I'm talking about um, compound stress. A uh, glottalic airstream mechanism. That's better. Everyone? No S at the end. Glottalic airstream mechanism. Everyone? Glottalic airstream mechanism. Airstream 本身就是一个复合词. Airstream. And then we've got another noun after it. So it's a compound noun inside another compound noun. So take care of the first one, airstream. And then we've got another noun, has a base show shi, so email jong yin. Once more, glottalic airstream mechanism. Glottalic airstream mechanism. 
air. Yeah, watch the R if you're doing American. Um, we're going to learn a couple of ways that we can use this column of air above the vocal folds. 就是声带以下的那个空气不用我们所运的气是声带以上的而已不是直接从肺上来 for next hour yeah. Let's continue from where we left off We just started talking about glottalic airstream mechanisms and this is the first kind of airstream mechanisms that we're now learning about that's different from English Let's continue with the next paragraph and find out what's going on an ingressive glottalic airstream mechanism occurs in many languages. How so? Occurs. Occurs. Mm -hmm. And egressive. Egressive. Once more. How so? The uh, tong, tong tong, how An ing ingressive. Not ing. Ingressive is just the opposite. That means coming in. E is short for X. The prefix X. And X means what? Out. X means out. So when we're talking about an egressive glottalic mechanism, let's just talk about egressive. That means the air is going from where to where? From inside your body to outside. And you think that's the only way it can go, right? But no, remember last semester? What, did, what kind of a funny exercise did we try? We tried talking while we were sucking air in. Right? That's an ingressive airstream mechanism, but right now we're talking about an egressive. Okay, the X is gone, so E means out. It's going out. So don't mix it up with in. An egressive glottalic airstream mechanism occurs in many languages. How so? The, the principal language in northern Nigeria... In ma. Uh, the, the principal language of Northern Nigeria. 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 Good. Uses this this mechanism in the formation of a velar stop. Of a. Of a, of a, velar, mm -hmm. velar stop. Mm -hmm. That contrasts. Mm -hmm. This is a verb. That contrasts. Right. With a voiceless and voice velar and, stop. Don't say and. And. Voiceless and voiced velar stops. Velar stops. Velar stops. Right. K K Good. Mm -hmm. The movements of a vocal organs are shown, are shown in figure 6.1. These are estimated, not drawn on the basis of x-rays. All right. 6.1 is at the bottom of the page. They're going to show you how this works. Let's read a little more description before we play the files and try to Figure out what's going on in the figure. Next. Tina. In Hausa, the villa closure. In Hausa. In Hausa. And by the way, some say Auza. I had a Nigerian housemate at Princeton, and he said Auza. And I asked somebody else, and he said they're both pronunciations. I guess they're different. Different means who have different pronunciations. So Hausa, Auza are both okay. We can say Hausa. In Hausa, the villa closure and the glottal closure are formed at about the same time. At about the same. Uh -uh. Same. Haha. <laughs> Everybody's getting impatient now. It seems that's that's good, because if someone's getting impatient with us, we're more motivated to fix things. Everyone's same. 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 And this is the same problem as change, right? Same problem. Then. When the vocal folds are tightly together, 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 mm -hmm. the larynx is pulled upward. Upward, upward, about one centimeter. Is there a T in about? About. Yep. One centimeter. Mm -hmm. In this way. In it, this, not this, this, this. In this way, it acts like a piston. What's a piston? Mm -hmm. Louder. Yeah. Louder? Huosai. Huosai. Mm -hmm. Compressing the air in the pharynx. The compressed air is released by lowering the back of the tongue while the glottal stop is maintained. Maintained. Same thing. You, I think that should be your week one, Gongke, is A plus, plus nasal. Okay? Producing a sound with Not the producing. Producing. Pr producing. Mm -mm. I hear a Z. P 
producing. Producing. Uh -uh. Your U is too long. That's why I'm hearing a Z. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's part of the reason. But if I say producing, I will hear a Z there because the Z would make the U loud, uh, long. Producing. Did you sort of have that feeling, Amy? Yeah. Producing. We have to make it short to make sure that we hear the next sound as an S and not a Z. So very often, it's not really whether it's voiced or not. It's that vowel length that's going to decide what we hear. Everyone? Producing. Producing. Produce. 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 Not producing. Then we'll hear a Z. Okay? Producing. Producing. Mm -hmm. Producing a sound with a quality different from that is in... Different, not different. 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 D. D. Yep. Different Good. from that in an English... K Good. Very shortly, short. Very, not not very, very. Very shortly, shortly uh -huh. after the release of the velar closure. Velar closure. Velar closure. Uh -huh. The glottal stop is released, and the voicing for the following vowel begins. All right. Does this make any sense at all? No. Right. We have no idea what they're talking about. So I'm going to try to describe it now, and then we'll refer to the figure to try to figure it out. First of all, it's aggressive. It's still coming out from inside, going outside. It's not being sucked in like this. We do have aggressive airstream mechanisms, but this is not one. This is aggressive, number one. Two, it's glottalic. That means, like I said earlier, it's going to cut off the airstream right at the vocal folds. That's where we cut it off. Like, huh. okay, everybody hold your breath for a minute and then feel your vocal folds shutting. Huh. Uh. Okay. The air above that is going to be pushed. That will be a glottalic airstream mechanism. That's the first thing. Um, and in Hausa, which is a very widely spoken language, it has lots and lots, millions and millions of speakers. I forgot to check before class, but there are a lot of speakers of Hausa in the world and in Nigeria, obviously. They use this to form a special kind of stop. This is like the ones I just told you about in Georgian. Georgian has the same kind of stops and they're called ejectives. <clears throat> and they're just called bao yin like anything else. Bao yin is also plosives. But if you call it bao da yin, then you remember. I call it that, this is su ming, was a gate hada, so we know it. But it's a kind of bao yin. It's exploding from the glottis up. Now, how does it work? We have the vocal folds tightly together, just like I said, being xi, and then hold it. Huh. That's where we start. And at the same time, the larynx here, you hold ho, hui wang sang ji. And that's going to push things out before you release the stop. So make a get ready to say a K. Put your the back of your tongue on your velum to make a K while also holding your breath, both at the same time. Those are the two places they're talking about. You're closing your glottis, you're holding your breath. And number two, you're putting the back of your tongue against your velum, your soft palate. Do both of those at the same time. Hold your breath and make a K. And if you let the air out, you don't open your vocal folds, but you put that little bit of air that you've stored between the back of your tongue, touching the soft palate, and the vocal folds. You don't open your vocal folds, but you push up, and that's going to do what to the air? You've got this much air here. This is your glottis down here. This is the back of your tongue touching your soft palate. So we've got a little column of air stored here. It's like a column of air here. We're going to push it down here. Now, what happens when you try to compress air? Yeah, it's going to build a pressure there because you have this much space, and that's already full of air. If you make this space solid, uh, smaller, is the air going to like that? No, the air wants more space. So something has to happen. The air molecules will be packed more tightly together. That's air pressure. That's compression of air. But if we have compression of air inside our vocal tract, do we feel it? Just like remember with put, you can feel air pressure behind the tip of your tongue. Put. Before you let go of that T, you'll 
We're doing the same thing here between the glottis, which is closed. So it had done you just see a shiti zanzi, tajosi meo fong the don't see. And then here is the back of your tongue touching your soft palate. Tigi yes a meo fong. Dun you saw the bin you'll get enclosed space. There's just a column of air here. Your conchi zu zai zi bin. So now we're going to make this space smaller. The glottis is going to push up. The hot hold zai bin, your larynx is going to push up. And it's going to make this space smaller, which means the air is going to be under pressure. When air is under pressure, it's not comfortable to hold, right? Because it's pushing against your tissues. Pushufu. So when something's pushing against you, what do you usually do? Let it go. I don't want to have all that discomfort here. Since we're being very jinshi down here, it's being very solid, it's pushing down here. What are we going to have to do to get rid of that discomfort? Lower the tongue, right, and then the air is going to explode because it's already been under pressure. Suddenly we release the pressure and just like with t, this is the same thing, exact same thing, except for t, it's pulmonic. The pressure is coming straight from the lungs. The pressure is pushing up from the lungs to the back of your tongue against your alveolar ridge. Everybody do this with just a T, a pulmonic T. Before you let go, feel that pressure. You're using your strength here. Then let it go. And then you can feel and hear the explosion. We're doing the same thing here, but what are we changing? The air is not coming straight from the lungs, but it's starting. What is the starting point of the air? The glottis. The glottis. That's your shung dai. Glottis is technically the space between your vocal folds, but we're just saying that place. It's all the same. So it's gonna, you're gonna put the tongue down and then it explodes. That makes an ejective K, ejective, ejective. So let's try to make an ejective K. Why don't you look at this picture and see if you can understand what they're doing? You see the bottom, number five? The glottal closure is at the bottom, and then you're sealing the air in, and the back of the tongue is up. So, that's the limited amount of air we've got in an enclosed space. But now this glottis, we're going to push it up. And so this space is going to get shorter, and the air is going to get compressed. So we let the tongue down here, and it explodes. Ah. Yeah, you did it. Beautiful. You got it. All right, listen to me do it a few times, and now that you understand the theory, you should be able to produce one yourself. Some students don't get it right away. It takes a while, so if you can't get it, don't be frustrated. You will get it eventually. This is when you can learn. The one students really have problems with, and I'm sure, not sure why, is implosives. We'll be coming to them soon. They are also glottalic. But if you don't get it right away, don't worry. So listen to me. Say it a few times with the vowel ah. Ah, 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 ah. My Georgian name, kareni, 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 ah, ah. All right, you guys try it. They're going to be separate at the beginning, but try to make them more connected as you practice. But if they're separated at the beginning, no problem, it's okay. Ah, 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 ah. You don't have to. Make them too connected right away. If you can produce it, the connection will come later. Ah. 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 How are we doing? Is it okay? Ah. 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 Okay, you've got the right idea. And I think it was you two in the back, you got it. Ah. 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 Ah, that's it. Carol's got it. All right, that's it. And we can do it with other stops as well. <clears throat> uh is pretty easy in the back, I think. Then ah, ah, ah. It's just like the t we were practicing just now, but we're cutting the air off at the glottis. Ah, 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 ah. Universiteti in Georgian. Teti. <laughs> okay, 
That's T, and we can also do it with P. Ah. 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 Do we have adjectives in English? Is that a yes or no? They are not a regular sound of language, but they are quite common in English, especially in British English. And if you listen to British English long enough, you will hear adjectives, especially of K. They will say things like, I'd like a piece of cake. Cake, you've heard it before? Tingoma. Cake. Cake. You can practice with a familiar word. It may be a little easier. Cake. Cake. That's it. That's it. That's an adjective K. Cake. It's not a regular sound of English, but it's very common. How can I say it's very common? Besides seeing it in the books, because you know I listen to a lot of audio books. I also listen to a lot of BBC. It's very common over the BBC. And I think, ah, oh, there's another one. There's another one for my phonetics class. Mm, there's another one. And different readers of the books that I listen to, some of them have none at all, but some of them have them quite frequently. So it occurs as an occasional oddity in English. You'll get oh father, get But it's not so odd because it is definitely more common in British English. And I've seen discussions about this over a phonetics list. And the, Brit the Brits were saying, I do this quite often myself. OK, so now we have our first new airstream mechanism, the first example of a glottalic airstream mechanism. Ejectives are the first example of a glottalic. They're aggressive and they're a glottalic airstream mechanism. Let's continue. Uh, Miranda, stops made with a glottalic aggressive airstream mechanism are called ejectives. The diacritic indicating an ejective is an apostrophe placed after a symbol. All right, there's a new IPA symbol. This is a regular IPA symbol. And that's why you have to be careful when you're mixing systems. In Wade Giles, we didn't learn about the Wade Giles romanization systems, but if you read the web pages, you know something about it. You know how it's, people think it's kind of strange that we write Taipei as Taipei, right? And do you remember the reason for it? Because originally, in the, in the Wade Giles system, they only use P, P apostrophe, T, T apostrophe, K, K apostrophe for B, D, G, P, T, K. That's how they write them. So if it's a B sound, they're going to write a P, not a B. They didn't use B. They don't use B at all. Wanchen bu yong B. B, D, G. G yo yong, because it's an N, G, so it's yong. B and D, So in the original Wade Giles system, this had an apostrophe somewhere. Where was the original apostrophe? After the T, because this is aspirated. Tai Bay. And then it comes out right. Now it makes sense, right? But over time, we thought that this apostrophe, being bahao kan yo ma fan. So what do we do with it? just omitted it, we don't use it at all, and that made this very ambiguous. This could be dai bei or dai pei or anything, because de, gen te, be, pe, ge, ke, xin wan bu fen le. That's what we used at the Xinwenju when I was there in the 80s. Jiu shi yi ge, na diao suo you de apostrophe de, wei tong ma shi, wei jiao zuo ma ping yin. It's really ambiguous. And nobody in Taiwan practically learns about romanization. So they copy things out of a dictionary. They have no idea what they're getting. And very often it's modified Wade Giles, plus mistakes. Plus mistakes. Plus some Guo Yu Luomanzi, a different system, which is much more complicated. Like Hong Se de Hong will have an R in it. For R, So you'll see in a lot of, you know where this is used a lot? Is Yo Lan Che. <laughs> this one is called GR. We just GR. Yeah, 
This one is Wade Giles, this is WG. There's also another one called Yale, which if you ask me to pick one in terms of which is the easiest to learn and the most intuitive, Kan Jiu Hui Nian De. Yale actually I think is the best. It's really the best. Nobody uses it, but it's the best. Never got used very well, except at Yale. If you went to Yale University, you used it. And then now the world standard has become pinyin. This one I think is better, but nobody, there's no hope. Nobody will ever use it. Since everybody's using pinyin, we just use pinyin and just down the shi. Not for political reasons. Well, you could say because China's powerful, they were able to spread their system. But Suqing just sit down. So pinyin, I think, is what we should use. But there are other systems. And this is confusing. Now, my original point was we use an apostrophe to show what kind of a sound now? That's in the Loma pinyin, but now in IPA, what does it mean? Ejectives. Ejectives. So you have to make sure you know what you're looking at. Is it romanization? Is it IPA? What kind of a system is it? You have to know what you're doing because they're using the same symbol for a different purpose. So this symbol, the apostrophe, means an ejective stop. And ejectives are mostly voiceless. They're mostly voiceless. It may be possible for them to be voiced. I've never heard of them. But mostly ejectives are voiceless. Um, let's continue. The Hausa sound we have just described is a uh, velar ejective. Watch, everybody watch it. It's not velar. Velar, right? Velar ejective. Velar ejective mm -hmm. symbolized with a K apostrophe. Uh huh. As in the Hausa word for increase. Kara. Mm -hmm. Kara. Let's listen to the files. First, let's listen to, let's see if they have them here. Yeah, they don't have them here, so I'll put them on the board. They're pretty easy. So we have and they write it just to make sure I've got everything here. This is long. And then uh, this is just the plain one. And this one has a tone on it. And then we're going to contrast it with the adjective. See if I got everything right. Yep. So we're going to hear these two pronounced. So listen. Kara. Do you hear an adjective? Kara. Okay, now listen. Kara. Now can you hear it? Kara. 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 Okay. So let's try those two. Kara. There we go. All right. They have a couple more here. They add a glide. So it's the same thing, but with a W here. And then a, I'm trying to figure out where to put the W before or after. It goes before, yeah. All right. Let's listen to those two with the W glide here. Wow. And... Quara. Quara. So let's try this one. Again? Quara. Quara. Okay. And you can also do it with fricatives. You can do it with an S. And the next one is the same here as this one without the W and change the K into an S. Listen. Sara. Alright, try that one. Sara. Sara. Alright, now listen to an adjective S. Sara. 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 It's harder than a stop. Sara. 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 Okay? Actually, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. He hasn't talked about that yet. But now you know what he's talking about here. And I think. You've got it pretty good. Anybody need, uh, need any further explanation? Do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, is it in voice? Um, I think I've, what happens is 
he will often say that this particular sound is always this or always that. And then somebody will say, but I have this in my language. This has happened many times with Professor Latifoget. And as I remember, Pingjiyi, I remember there are a few examples in the world's languages of voiced ejectives, but they're very rare. They're very, very rare. Usually ejectives are voiceless. Okay, kara, ga. It's really hard to do. I don't know if it's possible, but basically ejectives are voiceless. That's good enough. You don't need any more. Definitely for the test, you don't need any more. Okay, continue. Which, as you can hear on the CD, contrasts CD, with, CD contrasts with contrasts with kara, put near. Mm -hmm. The symbol indicates that the vowels are long. The accents over the vowels indicate the pitch, a low tone. Okay, so kara ra is a low tone. We will discuss tones in chapter ten. Mm -hmm. Chapter. Chapter 10. Not so much rounding. Look, chapter. Chapter. You're going ch. We don't want so much. Ch chapter. Chapter. That's better. The CD also illustrates the contrasts between the Hausa. Mm -hmm. The Hausa words, uh, kwa ra. Yeah, we just did it. Por and kwa da. Kwa da. Kwa da. Try it, Miranda. Kwa da. Kwa da. Kwa da. <laughs> You're going to need some practice on it, but you'll get it. You'll be fine. Yeah. Shea nut. And shea nut, it's become really popular now. In, uh, I've just seen it. Actually, it's used to make shea oil, which is used in things like mu yuru. And I know the Chinese, and I forgot it right now, it has a mu to the mu in it. That's it. I think you got the order wrong. <laughs> she has the right characters in the wrong order. <laughs> That's it. That's, it's become very popular, and I've tried it. Actually, it's really good oil. It's really good for beauty products and soaps and things. And that's what this is. Let's go on. It is possible to use an ejective mechanism to produce fricatives as well as stops. Okay, not fricatives, fricatives. Fricatives. Good. As well as stops, as Hausa does in the words Sara. Sara, make it a sada. tap. It's probably a tap or a trill here. Sara, mm -hmm. cut, and Sara. 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 Arrange. 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 This goes into the problem of change, right? Same thing, and same. Uh, which are also on the CD. Mm -hmm. CD. CD. Good. Of course, a fricative made in this way can continue only for a short length of time. Length. Length. Right? Everybody remember? We have an epithetic what in that word? K, right. Length. Put the K in there, and then it'll come out right. Length. Length uh -huh. of time. Of time? Of time, as there is a comparatively small amount of air that can be moved by raising the closed glottis. So, when we are moving the glottis up, we just don't have that much air to work with. We have only this much. If we started the airstream from the lungs, it would be down here. There's a lot of space, and we have a lot of yunzuo的空间. But here we have only this And when you compress it, and then we release it, how much air will be released? It can only be the air that was already in that little column. But it's much, much bigger, has much more volume than this area. So, See, in theory, you could really make that one explode and last a long time. I want you to compare it. Try to make a tea, a pulmonic tea, and try to make the air after the explosion last a long time. Try. That's really long, isn't it? But if it is an ejective tea, I'm done. No more I have nothing left. It's it's exploded and gone. No more compressed air left. Okay? Let's go on. 
Adjectives of different kinds occur in a wide variety of languages, including Native American languages. Native American languages, because languages is repeated, so it's not stressed. Go ahead. Native American languages, African languages. African languages. African languages. Yeah, it's not ah, it's a. Ah. A African languages, and languages spoken in the Caucasus. Caucasus. Ka ka ka. Everyone, Caucasus. Caucasus. What's a word? This should remind you of a word. It's adjective used to refer to white people. They often call us Caucasians, which is kind of ridiculous because I am not from the Caucasus. My ancestors are from Germany and Sweden, not from the Caucasus. 高加索地区高加索地区 And which language do I keep mentioning that is in the Caucasus? Is spoken in the Caucasus? Georgian, yeah. Georgian is South Caucasian, 就是高加索南部 I'll just tell you this as as T Y H A because not totally T Y because we're talking about Georgian actually here,、um, but it's useful. Gaja Suo Di Chi was known as a language.、Uh, what was it? What do they call it? It was a big a big bag of all kinds of different things, jumble of languages.、Um, because there are so many different languages all over the Caucasus. Now who shall put on? And not only that, but it's divided into three parts. Nambu is 完全独立的一个语系，然后东北，东西 Let's start with 东西东西 is Abkhazia. 那个那个语言叫 Abkhaz. Abkhaz. And 他们已经从乔治亚独立起来了 They don't want to be part of Georgia. So there's Abkhaz in the northwest, and then in the northeast there are many other languages like Dagestan. They have their own languages and everything. Lots and lots. Um, so the three are all属于 Caucasian languages. 可是这三个语系互相一点关系都没有 as far as we know. So it's a very, very complex area linguistically, but they have a lot of aerial features, and that means that, for example, you will find in many of these languages, you will find they all have probably all of them or many of them anyway have adjectives. Even though the languages are totally unrelated, they have adjectives in common and other certain traits in common, other certain features. These are called aerial features. So, 区域性的范畴 And you find this kind of thing all over the world, and we call these. 这个现象叫做 Sprachbund. 用个德文词 Sprachbund means a collection of languages that have features in common, but the languages are not related or they are not closely related. 可能是有很远很远的关系，可是有一些范畴是一样的。And you will find the reason. Well, I don't know if it's the reason, but anyway, the, one of the most famous Sprachbunds is in Eastern Europe, and it's Bulgarian, I think, and Romanian and Greek. 他们有一些共同的地方，比方说没有。不定词，它没有不定词这回事。For example, okay, maybe remembering it wrong, but that's just an example. 这些这些语言互相没有什么关系，或者关系非常远。But because they are in a contiguous area, 邻近的国家 their languages have shared features. And you will find a Sprachbund here in East Asia where we are. What do you know about the languages of China? And then. And then the languages that are close to China in countries close to China, for example, Vietnamese and Chinese are they related? They're not related. 一点关系都没有，根本就是不同的语系 China belongs to Sino-Tibetan. Vietnamese, I think, is is、um, is is is、uh, what do you call it? Australasian. I will think of it in a minute. 它是完全另外一个语系 It's not related to Chinese. However. Have any of you learned any Vietnamese? Does Vietnamese have tones? It does. And it has the dying jet of jet go. Yes. Now, doesn't that really tempt you to think it must be related to Chinese? Because is it closer in structure to Chinese or to English? Obviously, to Chinese. It looks really similar to Chinese in structure, monosyllabic structure, and it's got tones. And in fact, 
The tones correspond exactly to the tones of Cantonese. 它跟广东话的声调系统是一模一样的. So that would tempt you to believe that they are related. But knowing that they are not related, how do you account for the fact that they have the same tone system as Cantonese? Mutual influence, 就是互相影响. Chinese originally did not have tones. 它是后来才演化出来,才演变出来的. How do tones come into being? That's called tonogenesis. Tonogenesis. T-O-N-O. Then how genesis. Genesis. Tonogenesis. That's a feature that can be borrowed, just like ejectives are easily borrowed from culture to culture. These are aerial features. And languages that are not related or not closely related that share a similar feature, they belong to a to a, everyone, Sprachbund. Sprachbund. So the languages of the Caucasus form a Sprachbund because they have many features in common, for example, ejectives. OK? So it's not really ty hua. It's something really useful. And we'll come, come back to it, I bet, later on. Other languages where ejectives are quite common are languages of the Americas, not just North America, but Central and South, South America as well. You find lots of languages with ejectives. What is the most widely spoken Native American language? The Native American language with the most speakers today? Quechua. It's spoken in Peru and Bolivia, in that area in Ecuador. It's called Quechua. It's got different spellings, but the most famous one is this. Quechua. They have ejectives. And many of the native languages of North America, many of them are dying. They're near extinction. Some are being revived. Many of those languages also have ejectives. So, and in Africa, they're extremely common. So I've been to places or had some connection with places that have ejectives. When I went to South Africa to sing, we had to sing ejectives in our songs. So maybe we can sing an African song with ejectives someday when we have time. Uh, we did already at Christmas time, Georgian. Okay, you already had ejectives then. But we didn't spend a lot of time on them. So these are the areas where you find lots of ejectives. Native American, North, Central, and South, African, and the Caucasus. And it's interesting that in both the Caucasus and in Africa, Ejectives are the default. That means they are more common than the non-ejectives. Ejectives is normal to stop defining the function. Fei ejectives is more marked. Let's continue. Table 6.1 gives examples of ejectives and con contrasting sounds made with a pulmonic airstream mechanism. It's still contrasting, it's still a verb. Contrasting yeah, right. sounds made with a pulmonic airstream mechanism in Lakota. Right, that's right, excuse me. A Native American language. Mm -hmm. the a Native American language. A Native American language. The sounds of Lakota differ from those of English in many ways. In addition to having contrastive adjectives, later in this book we will discuss the unfamiliar symbols in this table. All right, we're going to have dictations again this semester, but we're going to have nonsense syllables, and we're then going to move on to actual words in exotic languages. Either I will use recordings or I will learn to pronounce them myself, and then you will write down the IPA. So we already know how to write ejective stops. They're PTA, PTK plus and apostrophe. So that's really easy to remember. Here we have Lakota ejectives. You can see it in the table at the bottom of page 138, table 6.1. We've got, I'll just go down the list. No, I'll go across first, because that'll give you an example of PTK. Let's listen. Oh. Okay, everybody? Oh. 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 
uh, I'm going to use the microphone. Hui Hui Pen Mai Jiu Shi. Oh. 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 I'm just hearing oh over here. Oh. Now I hear it. Okay. Mm. Let's listen again. Okay, try it again. Oh. Oh. All right, the next one you see has a dental T and it's an adjective at all costs. I can imagine that's a useful word to know in Lakota. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's listen a few times. Uche. Good. Okay. And the last one, velar. That's a simple word again to give. Ooh. It's kind of an ooh. It does not not an ooh. An ooh. Okay. Listen again. I'll play it a few times. Ooh. 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 Okay. Try. Ooh. 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 Okay. We're not going to do the other ones because they've got some new sounds we haven't covered yet. Let's go on. Um, Bella. Okay. You can probably hear the difference between the Lakota, sim uh, Lakota syllables uh, to and uh, to, to, mm -hmm. in the audio files that accompany table 6.1. Okay, let's play another one, the one for who. It sounds like, is it aspirated or unaspirated? It's unaspirated. It says so in the table. Listen again. It's the one right in the middle. Okay, try that. Remember, it's dental. It's dental. So put your tongue tip against the back of your upper teeth. And let's do the ejective again. Okay, go on. And these differences are also apparent in the acoustic waveforms and spectro, uh, spectrograms of the syllables shown in figure 6.2. Both of these syllables begin with a short burst of noise, the release burst of the stop. In the case of the pomonic aggressive stop, the vowel starts about uh, 30 milliseconds later, while in the glottalic aggressive uh, aggressive stop, aggressive stop, aggressive stop, mm, again, aggressive uh -huh. stop. Yep. T t there's a gap of over 120, uh, 120 milliseconds, and then the milliseconds, second milliseconds. And then the second stop, release burst. The second burst is marked by the double-headed arrow that points, and that points at the release burst in a waveform at the top of the figure, and in a time-aligned spectrum, a, spect a spectrogram at the bottom of the figure. Was at the at the at the mm -hmm. at the bottom of the figure. Bottom was the bottom. 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 Mm -hmm. Bottom of the figure. This second stop release is the release of the glottal, uh, glottal closure. This is a clear acoustic cue telling us that the stop release cue. burst uh, cue, cue yeah. telling us that the stop release burst in uh, two was produced by a glottalic aggressive airstream mechanism. All right, we haven't learned about spectrograms yet, but look at the waveforms. You can see with tu, there's a very short VOT. And with u, we have a much longer one. What are the times they gave you for the pulmonic one? How long is it? About 30 milliseconds. But for the adjective, it's over 120 milliseconds. So it's much slower. Du, u. You've got that big gap there. OK? Mm. U. So. See, it says that there's a second, 
Um, there's a second stop release here, right here. 那个箭头的地方 The second stop release is the release of the glottal closure. That means for ooh, when we're going, we have our glottis closed to push the air out, right? So, 声带必须并拢，就是挤在一起，变成好像是一个实体，就是没有缝的 Pushes the air out, and then we get an explosion. And after the explosion, do we keep our vocal folds shut? No, we have to breathe, right? So we open them again, and that's the second one that they're talking about. The second releases of the glottis. Is that clear? Because they're talking about two releases. So the first one is, and that one's alveolar or dental in this case. The second one is the glottis eventually has to open again, and that's the second release. Okay, so. Ooh, shaped. Ooh, ooh. We're hitting. We're getting a glottal stop, basically. 清楚吗 Is it okay? Let's go on. Some people make adjectives at the ends of words in English. Okay, ends should be ends. Ends. Good. Of words in English, particularly in sen sentence final position,、mm -hmm. you might notice this in words such as. Bike with a glottal stop accompanying the final. K Can you demonstrate for us? Say the English word bike and put an adjective at the end.、Mm, bike. Bike. Uh huh. That's it.、Mm. If the velar stop is released while the glottal stop is still being held, a weak adjective may be heard. See if you can superimpose a glottal stop on the final. And produce an adjective. Now try to make a slightly more forceful adjective stop. By now, you should be fully able to make a glottal stop in a sequence such as a ga.、Hmm? That's a glottal stop, not a velar stop. Oh. Ah、uh, ah.、Uh. That's all it is. No dot. A question mark with no dot is just a、uh, a.、Uh. That's all it is. A glottal stop. So everyone, ah、uh, ah.、Uh. Ah、uh, ah,、uh. uh, uh. all right.、Uh, so the next step is to learn to raise and lower the glottis. You can recognize what it feels like to raise the feels like pause. Feels like to raise the glottis by singing a very a low note and then moving to the position for singing the highest note that you possibly can. We already did that last semester for a different reason. But we're going to do it now to just feel what it feels like to move the glottis. So pretend you're going to sing. Oh, last semester it was whistling, right? Whistling the highest note and whistling the lowest note. We could. We did that to find formants. This semester we're going to try to sing, but you don't have to make any noise. Pretend you're going to sing the very, very lowest note you can sing. Ah,、oh, ah,、oh, I can't go any lower. Ah,、oh, it's not really singing either. It's pretty awful. Ah,、uh, uh, I've hit my limit. Ah,、uh, all right. Now move to the very highest note you can sing. I can go pretty high. <laughs> Sounds like a mouse. So go from the very lowest to the very highest. Then you can feel your glottis moving up and down. That's what they want you to do here. Uh, uh, uh. All right. You don't have to make any sound at all. Just make the gestures, and then you can feel your glottis. Starting low and then moving up. Try it. You can see mine moving. Can you see it? Ah ah ah! You can you can see it going down and then going up, and that's what you're doing to produce an ejector. Let's finish the paragraph. Doing this silently makes it easier to concentrate on feeling. Bring the muscular sensations involved. So they're saying if you don't make noise, then you won't be distracted by the sounds, which sound pretty funny. We kind of laugh at them. If you make no sound, you can just concentrate on the feeling and the the feeling in your muscles. Putting your fingers on your throat above the larynx is also a help in feeling the movements. Repeat silently this sequence: low note, very high note. Until you have thoroughly experienced the sensation of raising your glottis. Thoroughly. Thoroughly. Thor. I say thor.、Uh -huh. Thor. Thoroughly.、Okay.
Now try to make this movement with a closed glottis. 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 Mm -hmm. There will, of course, be there no. There will, of course. Uh, there will, of there course. There will, of course. There will, of course. Yes. Be no sounds produced by these movements alone. Okay, we're gonna stop there, but try to do that. This time, put your fingers lightly on your throat. Make the low note without sound, and then make a high note. You can feel a lot of muscle action there. Make it just a kind. Can you feel that moving around a lot? It makes a very large movement. That's what we're doing when we're making an ejective. All right. I think you did fine with ejectives. That's our first exotic sound of the semester, or type of sounds. I want all of you to add one more thing to your list of things to do. And as I want, that is, I want you to listen for ejectives in any language. I don't hear them in Chinese, actually. It's kind of rare. But they're quite common in British English. Try to listen to the BBC when you can. Or you don't have to make a real special effort, but just listen to people speaking English, especially native speakers, and see if you can catch some ejectives in their speech. Because if, if you're lucky, you may find a couple. You know who makes adjectives? Who's very accessible? Giles. <laughs> Do you have Giles for any classes? Listen. Oh, you don't. Oh, you can. Okay, Giles uses. I, I had this feeling there was somebody I know who does it really often, and I didn't think of it till right now when I was thinking of your teachers. Giles does it quite often. Have you ever noticed, Sophie? You're nodding your head. You have. Good. Somebody can at least judge what I said. Listen to Giles if you have him for a class. Do we have any other British teachers? Is he our only one? Who else? Oh, yes. If you have any classes with Vivian Westbrook, listen to her speech. I don't hear her talk that often. I talk to Giles more often. But Giles definitely has them, so listen, OK? Or maybe you can be an auditor for a day. And what do you need to do for Monday? Notes, including list all the issues from last semester you think you really should work on. And also, you choose what? Choose one for the coming week to focus on and try to fix forever. What else do you need to do? Any? Corrections for the final exam. You need to turn them in. What else? Go listen to Giles talk. That's another one. What else? Before I had you go listen to Mr. Partington, because he has Canadian raising. Remember? We talked about Canadian raising. Mr. Partington has it beautifully. It's absolutely perfect. OK, but now it's Giles that we need to help us. What else? Anything else? Vowels and consonants. It's not for Monday, but you need to start on it early. See Amy about a possible study group, reading together. And please try to preview the text, because it will really save us time in class. And there are things that maybe you don't know about adjectives and things, but you do know about, for example, duanju, phrasing. So mark where you should pause, the end of the full subject, etc. And then I think the reading can go more smoothly. That's it. Any questions? We'll see you next Monday.